Hello, Dave Prouse here with a quick video about pseudo-random number generation. One of the differences between man and computer is randomization, or to put it more accurately, the way that randomization occurs. In the computing world, it can be argued that nothing is truly random, and instead sequences of numbers that are required by games and encryption techniques are generated in a pseudo-random fashion. Pseudo-random number generators, or PRNGs, are coded primarily in C and Java environments. For example, if you're working in the Linux C library, you would use perhaps the RAND function, or perhaps the RAND underscore R function, or the SRAND function. PRNGs are also known as deterministic random bit generators, or DRBGs. Cryptography applications require that random output used to generate keys is not easily guessed or predictable. This means using more elaborate algorithms. It might also mean using a TRNG, a true random number generator, which could be implemented as an add-on computer card or other hardware-based implementation. But for the purposes of this sub-lesson, we'll focus on software-developed PRNGs with no hardware assistance. Let's look at this basic illustration. As we mentioned, you might be using C or Java as your programming language. And let's just say we're using Java. And the cryptography application could be, say, a key generator. Maybe for an online commerce uh, application. And the platform would be J2EE. And we'd be using the Java cryptography extension, JCE. As far as the utility goes, we'd be using, we could possibly use java.utility.rand. That would be the random function. And it would be SHA2 PRNG. It would invoke java.securerandom. And it uses the Sun Java SHA2 PRNG algorithm. Now, if you're doing this, if you're doing it in a hashing format, then you want to make sure you're using SHA256 or higher. So 256 or 384 or 512, that type of hashing is recommended. And you want to avoid the SHA-1 uh, 160 bit or lower. We don't want this. Now the key, no pun intended, is to create as much randomness as possible. To this effect, we can use the slash dev slash random file or slash dev slash urandom file for a higher level of entropy, uh, utilizing noise on the system, especially hardware noise. We can also call up the randomize function before calling rand and use strong cryptographic ciphers, such as AES or higher, and the aforementioned SHA-256 for the hash function. One of the threats to PRNGs is the random number generator attack, which subverts or exploits weaknesses in PRNGs. If the random number generation or RNG process is not of high quality, then that can lead to vulnerabilities and possibly compromise of the entire cryptographic system. This might be done via cryptanalysis attack or input-based attack. Preventing RNG attacks can be done by implementing the randomness methods that we mentioned previously. We'd use a high-quality block cipher, such as AES, or a stream cipher, perhaps RC4, or a more secure derivative, but one that is derived from a good random source. Then we would document and audit the RNG process, which I guess could be considered more of a detective or corrective control as opposed to a preventive control. And finally, maintain physical control over the systems 
the cryptographic algorithms and the hardware that's used to generate random numbers. As a last tip, store key databases in separate secure locations. This compartmentalization can help to prevent entire cryptographic system compromise, even if the PRNG process has been compromised. So that's it for this sub-lesson about PRNGs.